Hello and welcome to another edition of your favourite podcast, Insane in the Membrane. Insane in the Membrane. Here we are. Wow, it's, the, year, the year's already rattling along, isn't it? This is the thing as you get older. The time just rattles by, doesn't it? I'm already in Feb. Good Lord. I am... Um, it, yeah, so when I was a kid, do you remember the the days which just last forever? You'd run around playing football all day, or you'd run around in the woods, just last forever. But now it's like we're already in February. Jesus Christ! I don't know. I don't. I just, I, it just feels like time's just time's just rattling past. I don't. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's not worry about that. Um, so uh, before we get into this, thanks again to our wonderful patrons for helping us keep the lights on. Really do appreciate everything you do. Honestly, it really doesn't go unnoticed. I know they say that every time, but it really doesn't. You are spectacular human beings for doing what you do. You, you really are. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. We really do appreciate it. And if anyone listening wants to become a patron, do go to our Patreon page, uh, Insane in the Membrane, and pledge what you like. Uh, it, like I say, it all goes back into the podcast. We don't make any, any uh, a penny from it. It all goes back in to help us with advertising and things like that. So if you could do that for us, that would be fantastic. Um, also, go to buythatmerch.co.uk. That's where you'll find our stylish T-shirts, uh, Insane in the Membrane. Um, yeah, and that's and there's loads more on there as well. There's Comedy Arcade, which is Vic Slayton's uh, podcast. There's uh, uh, there's the Pink Toothbrush. There's all manner. There's two girls, one uh, po- one podcast. I think it's called. Uh, they're on there. Um, it, there's loads of merch on there. What they're doing? Because uh, I've been down. I went down and saw like just before Christmas. I went down to see. Uh, they're set up now and they've got incredible state-of-the-art technology that they and they can knock out gear quick as a flash so and so that and that keeps the cost really really low so it's really good for bands or comedians or anyone like that so anyone listening and you'd like some merch uh, done at a really decent price and done really quickly yeah, and it's good quality stuff as well ethically sourced it's vegan friendly uh, get in touch with the boys uh, uh, buy that merch.co.uk they're the lads they they'd save our souls clothing Mark and Stacey so do that uh, honestly they'll sort you right out excellent boys um, also don't forget to check the uh, episode notes each week for links to our guests our merch and our YouTube channel uh, which we've, we've had up for a while now that is uh, Insane in the Membrane on YouTube because uh, a lot of the times we video uh, our conversations now so you better see exact, exactly what we get up to there's also and, and if you want it live uh, we've got Twitch channels, um, and so we, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we let you know when we're going to do that, but more often than not, we're just going to start doing it, so keep an eye out, because it'll just flash up that we're doing it, and so, um, and then when you do Twitch, when we do Twitch, you can actually comment, you can actually send us comments, and so producer Paul will be in the studio, and he can read them, and you know, so we can, you know, it, it, so yeah, you can get involved live and direct when we do Twitch, so let's do that, alright? Alright, cool. So, uh, our guest this week. I haven't, I, we've, we've said this in the episode, we've worked together, but not for a long, long time. He's a brilliant comedian, excellent um, uh, TV host. Uh, there's a lot of uh, children's television, he's a fantastic human being. Just I've never known a more warm, welcoming human being. He's, he's, he's fantastic, uh, very funny as well, very, very funny. Uh, Ionel Tomlinson, and like I say, we haven't seen each other for a long time, but when we were doing the chat, it, honestly, it was like we hadn't, we hadn't seen each other for five minutes. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He's a, he's a really good dude. And it was really surprising. Again, with this with this podcast, there's something happens to people. People feel they can open up and talk about all manner of stuff, all manner of personal stuff. And Arnell did that. I suddenly were like, oh wow, I didn't know that was going to go in that direction. And that's what the point of this podcast is: is for people to talk about things that they might not necessarily talk about. And in that, and in doing that, that helps you, the listener. Uh, with your own mental health because then you can go oh yeah I've been through something similar like that oh it's nice to know that I wasn't alone like, you know, I know that other it's not nice some of the things we, we have to deal with but it's, you, it's, you take some a certain amount you know, some sort of solace you know some comfort from knowing that you're not the only one because you, you, that's the thing that can happen to some people you get bogged down thinking you're, everyone else is smashing it and you're the only one there's so many things to deal with so you know it's good to hear it's good to hear people talk about their side of things and, and, and you know and that's why we do the podcast uh, with that in mind drop me a line if you're if you're struggling with anything or you want to have a chat or you want to comment on anything just drop me a line I'm on I am Rich Wilson on Instagram we've also got Insane the Membrane has got its own uh, it's, got, it's got its own page on Instagram uh, Fembrain is on there as well there's also the Tuned Up Time Machine that's got its own page so any of those any of those drop me a message on those uh, I might not get back to you straight away but I will get back to you eventually and so drop me a line you know we'll have a chat I'm happy to have a chat with you so uh, let's you know what I've flannelled on again uh, let's get on with it shall we so coming up in a minute is Arnell Tomlinson a podcast from producer paul.co.uk insane in the membrane 
How you doing, Arnel? You good? I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Long time, man. Such mm-hmm. a long time. This is what happens. I just you just get caught up in it, like yeah. running around and you just Cause yeah. Cause you know what? Before hey, before this, I was trying to remember the last time we kicked together. And I was like, bro, I can't even remember. You know, I can't remember. Long, long yeah. time ago, man. It must have been. Nah, it wouldn't have 2018. been. 2018. Yeah, it would have been. Must have been. Oh, must have been. Man. That's the thing. You just forget. And like I say, like yeah, I mean, the last couple of years has been busy and <laughs> not busy. <laughs> to say the least, bro. Isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, mate, what a setup you've got there. What the f- is oh, that, thanks, is man. Is that your house? Look yeah, this is that. like a little outhouse office thing. Uh, separate, separate to the living abode. It sounds yeah, posh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's not that posh. It's, just a, it's converted garage out there back of the That's garden. That's all right, mate. That's all right. My, uh, my, uh, there's a guy called Stu Whiffin who's got a brilliant. He does a podcast called in, uh, Hardcore Listings and oh, off yeah. the beaten track, and he's converted his garage into a little bar called the, the Whiffin. Is and, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got like a proper bar and like pumps for. Hey, the what, do you need a license that? for that sort of thing? No, I don't think so. I think as long as you're, as long as you're selling it. <laughs> well, I, I, I ain't trying to snitch on him or anything. I'm just saying, like, if man's got a bar at the end of this thing, and he's... <laughs> um, yeah, so there's no big introduction. Just this, just chat. Hey, I'm good for chat, bro. And he I'm goes where it's, goes where it's got to go. Like I was saying, mental health is the jumping off point. Um, it is, yeah. And it's uh, like, well, you know, with what you do, it must be difficult because you've always, from what I can see, like, you've always got to keep, like, smiling and positive and... Uh-huh. And you know, like, yeah, 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 everything's great, everything's great. There must be days when you go, I'm not going out. I'm standing, I'm done with this. <laughs> uh, have those days sometimes. Very, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be brutally honest with you, Rich. Yeah. Very rarely, you know. Really? Very rarely. That's cool. Do you know, do you know what it is? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like, it's like most people, isn't it? I've I, like had stuff happen to me in like in my, in my childhood. It doesn't sound like crazy or anything, mm. but like had like a, like a tough upbringing sort of right. thing. And so it almost made me like, appreciative as I've yeah. grown up of like some of the things I've been able to experience, some of the things I've been able to gain in my life, like oh, career successes and things like that. To the point where I'm like pretty happy most times, you know, because I was like, yo, I used to be mad back in the day. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is nothing, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I, as I'm getting older, I'm getting more relaxed with, with not being able to control everything. Oh, does that make yeah, sense? It does. Yes. 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 I, I'm like, I don't know it sounds like like a, some sort of like Buddhist like mindset, but it's more of a thing of just like letting things just go, and it? it's like, oh, yeah. because you know, because I always think about all the times like I'm always stressed, right? When I, like if you think about any time you're stressed, it's always the main thing that's on your mind. You can't think about nothing else. Yeah. It's that one thing, and it's like, oh, it's bugging me all day. As soon as you wake up, you're having your breakfast, you're on the toilet, then you do do. You're thinking about it constantly, and then. When it's over, you have that relief, and then almost sometimes you can even laugh about it. As comedians, we sometimes we even turn it into material. Yeah, absolutely. And then, it, yeah. and then it's like, yo, it's like that. That uh, for how long that period was, I was stressing for. That was the only thing I could think about. As yeah. soon as it's done, I'm laughing. <laughs> so I was like, that's how I. So anytime like tough times kind of come to me, I, I try and remind myself that's the case. Like it's it's for limited time, in it. Yeah. Like things come and go. Yes. And so. I like even though some things can be emotionally distressing, I'll be like, ah, in a couple of years' time, I'll be laughing at this moment. You know, there's some yeah. low, low moments that I just be cracking jokes on over afterwards, and it's like, and I, and I'll say it to other people, and they'll be like, oh, really, really? And I'm busting jokes. It's like, oh, it's fine, it's cool, man. I'm over there. <laughs> it's true. It's funny, like, well, like you say about growing up. I mean, I didn't have a bad childhood. It was just a different style of parenting. Um, yes. And, uh, and did you have two parents? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the other thing as well, I forget. Because people go, they're still together. I go, yeah. And they Bruv. go, mate, that's <laughs> hey, that is, that's, hey, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so you came from, so your parents split then? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, my dad was kind of around, but not really. He wasn't really like a, a decent dad. And oh, so like mate, my so. mom was like the, the one who did everything. And like she's, like my mom is my hero sort of thing. Mm. She raised like three kids by herself working oh, full time and, and, and it's like you know yeah. crazy I don't know how, like to this day I, I rack my mind on how she managed to do it and we all turned out cool because I've I've, I've had friends and uh, and I guess people I've known that they've gone wayward for way less like yeah. they, they had a lot more but then they, like 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 the way the world is they, they've been affected by certain things in certain ways and they've gone the wrong direction and like I'm super thankful because I, I remember my mum like 
getting us up super early in the morning. Like we had to get like a couple of buses to get to school. Yeah. And then, and then uh, like she'd go to work straight after that. And then uh, we'd have to go to like a child minder after school because my mum's still at work. Wow. And then after, after my mum finishes work, she picks us up for the child minder, takes us home, feeds us back to bed, same again the next day. And it's like, yo, my mum didn't have no holidays. We didn't go abroad for a long time. And, nah, like, and, so, nah. and so it's, and so like, I, I think about, it's, it's like, a, it's what I was saying earlier, like being appreciative. I think about that. I think about that. And then I think about the stuff that I got to face as like an adult, like whining about some audience members in the comedy club they <laughs> laughing at some stuff. It's, it's minor, isn't it? It's minor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you beat yourself up about it. It's like, oh, yo, I could have got them and I didn't get them. But it's, not, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't go get your kids up at 7 a.m. and then you get them back to bed for what? 7 p.m. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> I mean, you know, because you're, obviously you're a father, but. I am, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. But even then, like, the, their mother and I broke up when they mm. were pretty young. But I, I still. I was still in their life. At no point did we go, did we use the kids against each other? At no point yes. did, did I not sort of step out of their life. Like I'd see them at weekend. Mm. Like every weekend they came to me. That's good. And man. all that. And so, good. yeah, and, and, we, and the, we've, Lisa, the mother of my kids, we both got a, we got a really good relationship with each other, you know, mm. even when we hated each other. But <laughs> I, hear, I know, I hear stories of people, they just go, no, I never saw him. Never saw him. Yeah. Never, just went, just disappeared one day. And that must be hard. Yeah, it it, yeah. It, it's, it was like, do you know what? I, I can only ever remember one time like missing my dad. Mm. And that, that was when I was, I remember, I was like five. I was five. I, I, and I, there was just, I just remember one time I missed him because he was in prison at the time. Oh, <laughs> I missed him. Uh, and then he came out of prison, never missed him after that. <laughs> <laughs> never again. It was like, it was yeah. just that one time I could always remember when I was a kid. Like just one time, I think it was because I like something happened at school, mm. and it was like everyone's parents were there, and and like my mum couldn't be there because she was working, yeah. And so everybody had their parents there, and that was just me sort of thing. And I always felt like oh, I've had my dad in this situation sort of thing, but that was it. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Like uh, I think my mum did such a good job raising us. Mm. I never felt like I was lacking. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. obviously, I probably was in terms of like what a father can bring to like a like their sons and and, and their children, but in terms of how I felt at the time yeah. when growing up, I didn't feel like I was lacking. Like once he was once he was out of prison and he was here and there, like never felt I was lacking in that kind of no. way. And like I never had those like lessons that you know, like first time shaving, have your first pint with you. Sort yeah. of thing. Never had any of those, but like I never felt like I missed those. No, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Your mom, yeah, because like I think job. my mom did such a bang up job yeah. that I never, never felt like I was lacking. Like I always say, like my, I never felt like I was poor. We were proper poor, but I never felt that I was poor. No, because like because we always we always had enough stuff. Like yeah. I was never starving. Like do you know what I mean? And like. If I couldn't have a toy, it was because you can't have a toy. It's not your birthday. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> you, know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait for the special occasions if you want treats. <laughs> treats are for special occasions. Yeah. You don't just get toy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, don't yeah. tell me you was one of those dads that bought your kids like <laughs> toys whenever they asked for them. All the time. No, I, I, I kind of went the other way because so so we oh, we, we like we were the same. <laughs> we never we were never we never wanted for anything when I was a kid. Yeah, you know, yeah. and we did. There, my mum and dad, you know, I, it, now I know it was when dad got paid. Like we go out, and then suddenly we're like, oh yeah, all right, what do you want? You, let's go toy shop, and then we is do that. It? It was good, but I'm then the other half live in it. Come nah, on, yeah, I know, you know <laughs> silver spoon. <laughs> <laughs> but when I when I had kids, I was terrible. I, I bought is them. It? I bought them everything. Yeah, I remember. I remember waking up my my eldest. Uh, so this would have been mid nineties. Toy Story yeah. was out. I remember waking him up, just putting Buzz Lightyear next to him on his pillow, and I just yeah, I don't, I just, I Look did, I spoiled, them. I spoiled them, <laughs> couldn't help it. Couldn't you wouldn't change it. it though, would you? No, not at all. And they're good lads. They're good lads. They don't, they they they're not. They, he hasn't ruined them, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I can see you thinking about it. I'm going, oh, boy. No, 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 no. They're good boys. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing about the moments in your head, right. isn't it? Like, what's yeah. that one time, though? Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> no, but what? No, but the thing is, what they've got, I because I was always worried about asking my mum and dad for stuff because it was yes. always a little bit of pressure. I'm like, oh god, mm. they're gonna make me, they're gonna make me feel bad. But and no, they just it was just that it was. Um, but my mum, but my, but with my boys, I'm like, look, if I've got it, you can have it. If I haven't, yeah. then you can't have it. But yeah. don't be scared to ask me because then 
because I don't want you building up pressure in your head and you want to, you know, I'm worried oh, okay. about it, you know? Yeah, oh, we was never scared to ask. We just never got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask what you want. It was always like, yo, can I get it? Nah. nah. You'd always try it. Yeah. It would never happen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, when it, when it did happen, it was super special. I remember, mm. oh, it was when Ghostbusters was in his prime. I was a, I was a young kid. Yeah. Ghostbusters was the big thing. Everybody wanted Ghostbusters. I wanted the Winston though. Uh, yeah. Winston's the black one yeah. but like I don't know if you remember the, the marketing of this film it's, it's still just as bad as to this day they always marketed the Ghostbusters movie as the three of them and they never had Winston on the poster oh yeah they did when we were they never, yeah. yeah it was always about Dan Aykroyd and Ramus yeah. and, and obviously Murray they never they never had Winston anywhere ever in yeah, any of the traits like, the promos or anything like that mate. even to this day they still don't do it they still don't do it they always they always leave him off like the second movie they put him on the poster first movie it was just about the three of them yeah, the three guys was, yeah. yeah the three guys and then oh yeah they're Winston in it <laughs> and they played it like oh well yeah those three started it yeah exactly they, they're in. the main ones he's just he's the part timer yeah like <laughs> he's still he's still uh, he's still on his probation period yeah, yeah that's how yeah. they kind of played it off <laughs> and so young back then it was hard to get the the, the Winston dolls not because mm. they were so popular it's because no one was buying them so they didn't stock them anyway they didn't make them yeah and, yeah, and so like I had, the, I had the whole set I had like I had the three of them I had the car mm. didn't have Winston didn't have Winston Christmas mm. time I remember my mum found it. I no said, where way. You, where, she, went to, she went to so many different toy stores to find it. I found, and she found it. I was like, yeah, come oh, on. Mate. But yeah, to this day, yo, they, they always messing up Winston, you know. You know check, check it. Go back. Go watch. <laughs> look at all the, pro, the promo materials for that movie. Do you know what? They done him dirty, Rich. They did. Do you know what? They done when, him dirty. When, do you know what? This is the conversation I've been having lately with a lot of people. I was talking to some family members a little while ago. And then they were kicking off, going, oh, I'm fed up with this. It's black people all over the telly. It's this, that, mm. and it's the other. And I'm going, yeah, but it hasn't been that way. That's oh. where we're at. Imagine being yep. the other way around. And they yeah. were going, oh, yeah, but we get it. We get it. You don't have to have it rammed down our throats, that old bullshit. Yeah. And, I'm like, and it got me thinking. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. Like you've just said about Winston getting kind of pushed to the side. When I was a kid, Action Man was the thing. Everyone had Action Man. And then mm. I saw this advert, black Action Man, Tom Stone. And mm -hmm. I had him. But I remember saying to my dad, I said, I want this action man, he's Tom Stone. And my dad, like you've just said, my dad had to travel far and wide far. to find me a Tom Stone. Yeah, because no got one him. was stocking him. No, nah, he didn't. And that's... Oh, sorry, these headphones. And that's the thing. And I took it to school and everyone was going, oh, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? I went, I don't know. My dad found me. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. Tom though. Stone, yeah. <laughs> but that was it. That was it. Tom Stone. And I remember, it, uh, yeah, I it, yeah, it, it used to happen a lot, man. It used yeah. to happen a lot. Winston was always the one that like irked me from young because that was the first time I remember that sort of thing happening. Because in the cartoon, he was always present in the cartoon, like for the yeah. kids, and with, like, which is why where I had the love for it. And then I saw the movie, and when I watched the movie, I was like, "Where's Winston?" Like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he comes in halfway through the film. <laughs> halfway through the film, he comes in, and then he's only in it for a little piece. Even then, if you watch the trailers back, watch the trailers, he's barely in it. Yeah, barely in the trailers. They don't, they never name check him on the posters. His name's not on the posters. No. It's like, what? What is it? Oh, hey. No, no. And so like, I get what, like, it's nice to see that journey is kind of starting to, we're starting to see more representation on TV, which is absolutely important. Yeah. But I guess like what as you're saying, when you hear people say that thing, it's getting rammed on your phone. It's, it's not, it's not. It's just the change is coming in and yeah. they're starting to notice the change. Yeah. And that's, the, that's a fantastic thing. And they shouldn't fight against that. No, of course not. And that's it. Those are the conversations you get. You go, yeah, but imagine what it would have been like growing mm -hmm. up and you're not represented anywhere mm -hmm. except white people and you're yeah, you know, crazy. And, it, and it didn't occur to me until like until the changes start to happen and you yeah. go holy fuck of course and then I, you start I, know, I know you uh, yeah. I know you chatted to, to, to Johnny did he tell you that when we got our TV show they like they literally said to us like we're the first like black double act to have our own TV show in the UK because like oh. in the in the states there was loads there's like Keenan and Kel yeah, and yeah, Key yeah. and Peel and things like that but in terms of in the UK there wasn't any black double acts that had their own TV show. No. I was like, what? We only had one black comedian, it was Lenny Henry. Yeah, they, 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 like, there's a couple of black comedians that had shows here and there. Yeah, 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 it was Lenny but Henry. But there was never yeah. any double acts that had any. No. There's been a lot of double acts, but... Pff, yeah. It's and crazy. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is... So then when someone like Jordan Peele goes, look, it's going to be a long time until I use a white actor in a main role 
in mm-hmm. one of my films. And people go, oh, that's outrageous. You go, listen to why he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look as to why that's, ra- that's that. reverse racism, though, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, nah, you're, you're letting them get to you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing is as well. That's the other thing is when I knew we were coming on doing this, because I, I, because there's another, you know, something else as well is like black people don't always want to talk about race. Mm. And you're like, I was like, I'm going to avoid that because you know, I didn't want it because. But it's like it just it just blows my mind because no one speaks to me about race. I don't yes. get that conversation. No yes. one's no one's asking. Oh, me oh, about I, it. I, don't, oh, don't you worry. I always bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love making people feel awkward about that sort of stuff. I love it. Hey, I'll, hey, if I don't think about it every day, so do you. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I've said that. I keep trying to. I don't. I can't make it funny because I think it's too true. Mm. Like every. Oh, right, so I grew up where I grew up in sort of southeast London, Kent borders. There's a load of people now. They'll spout their bullshit on Facebook, and it's all racist. Oh, right. It's all right wing. Well, like, yeah. What's, what's that like, Bexley Heath? And yeah, that? yeah, around there. So it's like all right, Bexley Heath, like, probably in that. And that down there, mate. And the pe- the people. <laughs> I grew up with these people, and I'm like, one day I was like, "How are you like that?" But I'm not like that. I don't understand. I know, that, mm. I know my mum's from Brixton, like old Brixton. Yeah. My grandma and my, that side of the family, they're all Camberwell. They're all from that area. Mm-hmm. So I get that. I'm like, yeah, I, I sort of grew up very sort of multicultural background. Like people from everywhere. Mm-hmm. I grew up surrounded by, and that was when I went, oh, I grew up with music, different music. Yeah. So yeah. I grew up with dub, you know, reggae, all sorts of different stuff, dance music. You know, uh, so I found out about people who were gay. I found out about people who've been oppressed. I found out about mm-hmm. all these things through music. Yeah. And I remember the people that are now spouting the shit online. They grew up. With, they didn't like music. I remember. Bro, they don't. They don't listen to nothing. Rich. Shit tasting music. All racists have shit tasting music. Rich, they're the sort of people that go out the house, no headphones, listening to the wind. <laughs> who the <laughs> wind? <laughs> <laughs> Just their own anger and hatred. <laughs> That's what they listen to, Rich. They got their own thoughts, and then they're just, they're just brewing. They're brewing. They got the wind just blowing it around. Hatred, hatred, hatred. Yeah, that's why I hate black people. <laughs> I swear. I swear. That's exactly what happens. Oh god! Only psychopaths leave the house without headphones. Uh, leave the house, you? no headphones, no music. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Oh man. Could never. Uh, Rich, I will I will happily be late for somewhere if I forgot my headphones and I have to go back up. Mate, I'll buy new you. ones on the way out. I'll go, oh, right. <laughs> new purchase. Yeah, I, can't, I can't walk around without headphones. I'll go buy some more if I have to. If my, like, my, so last, many my last few quid, I'm like, I need... I can't be left alone with my thoughts, man. I want music. I can't... <laughs> Well, do you know what? I always, I always feel I love having a soundtrack to my life. Yeah. Like I never, I'm never afraid of my thoughts. I like having a soundtrack to complement how I'm feeling. Yeah. So even if I'm feeling down, I don't mind putting on some like some sad R and B or whatnot. Right. Yeah. I don't mind it. I'll, I'll dwell in that moment, but then I'll change up the playlist. I'm back up again, and it's yeah. cool. And like music has always influenced my mood. Like, and sometimes I allow myself to to go deep and dark on some things. Other times I'll be like, I need to perk myself up, put on a nicer playlist. Let's put that on and, you know, rev up the day. That's how I, I don't know how people go around and don't listen to no music. Because that's, that's like an ambient, that's how you change the ambience, like yeah. straight away. If you yeah. want to change the mood of something, anything, put change up the music. Yeah. I mean, I mean, are you even alive if you don't queue up a decent track to step off the train to? When you're in like an underground station, yeah. like you're in a film, as soon as those doors go whoosh and you step out and like boff and you're off. See, Rich, that's that soundtrack. That's like, you know, remember back in the days, love, like when I first started stand up over here, that's the one thing I hated about open mic nights. Because I turned out to open mic night, there'd be no music. And right, oh, it, would yeah. just, it would just be, it would just be just like a dead atmosphere, a couple of people, like, what? Is comedy in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'd sit down and then, because there's no music, they're speaking quietly because they don't want anybody else to hear them. It's yeah. like, yeah, Then the ombudsman is a bit dead and it's like, okay, welcome to the stage, your host, hey! <laughs> no atmosphere. <laughs> you just that you know I mean? It's like, what? what? <laughs> this is supposed to be a show, like, get people engaged, bring, like, the energy in. Where's the tunes? Where's the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, build the atmos. The music is the easiest way of bringing, right. creating atmosphere. Although I, I do, there are some clubs where they go too far the other way and they have like pounding, 
like drum and bass or something like that. And you're like, no, 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 no. That's because yeah, for the, time the skankers. You, yeah, by the, <laughs> by the time you come on, they're all like, fucking stab it. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa relax. relax. To be fair, uh, yeah, I did, I did do a gig, gig um, I think it was last month, and one of the ladies was, cl- she was clearly pissed. Mm. And it was like, it was halfway through the night. It was like the second interval. And the music was playing and she was feeling it so much. She just got up and she was just dancing. She was trying to get other people to dance with her. Everyone was like, oh, no. Mm. And, then, and then as soon as the second half started, she just crashed. Ah, <laughs> peaked crashed. too soon. Crashed. <laughs> peaked. Peaked. You can always tell the people that aren't going to be around in the second section. They're... Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my partner is pretty good at that. She, well, she'll, she'll, uh, if she comes along to a gig with me, she'll always... Uh, spot people in the audience and she's like keep an eye on that guy in the third row oh yeah David him check out yeah check him check him <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't talk to him anymore he's had yeah. too many oh, he's I've just got... had a round of like three shots oh shit yeah me. shots at comedy clubs man oh yeah. god because the shots can affect you quick yeah because you'd yeah. be alright you'd be fine and then you'd have two tequilas in a row you're out now you're, you're out of the game <laughs> I've, I've decided I've decided I don't do shots anymore I just oh, it? because of that very thing because I go for them, if, if I do it, because normally, beginning of the night, someone goes, oh, we need to get his party started. And they go, shots. I go, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm at home, it's five o'clock in the morning, and no shoes on, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck happened? Oh, no. You know what oh, I mean? And I'm like, I can't, I, can't live those, I can't live those lives anymore. Yeah, man. Where's I'm not the doing it. Has gone? Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Once you start losing your memory, that's it. I'm not oh, doing it. Oh, yeah. snap. I've never had memory blackouts. Right. I Yo, stop. I yeah, stop. yeah, Rich, you're going too far, bro. This is... Yeah, yeah, Robert. I didn't know this was an intervention for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is why I do this. I'm just trying oh, to get right. <laughs> just trying to get this time out. with me. Right? Oh, no, it's you, bro. It's you. Like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, leave the tequilas. You don't need them. Don't need them. You don't need The black sambucas? No, no, no. Oh, no, God. No. I, was, no, I remember no, no. the last time I got in serious trouble with shots, it was black sambuca and Bailey's. Yeah, so it looked like a tiny Guinness, you. mate. That'll finish you. Yeah. Do you remember the days when they used to do the, the, the Bailey's chocolate cups? Where you'd have a shot of Bailey's, but it was in a chocolate cup. So you take the shot, then you eat the cup. No. Nah, okay, it's that. just me being an alcoholic, don't worry. Yeah, about yeah. You, try, <laughs> you got <laughs> alcohol in confectionery. That's what you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> Mixing the two. I've got a sweet tooth, so that's probably why I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, so you, so you and Johnny had your double act. In yeah. A TV show. And like you say, like, it, you were the first sort of double, black, double act to have your own TV show. Mm, you, over here, over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You must have looked at each other and just be like, the fuck? You know, like, groundbreaking. Do you know what? I loved the one thing I will never, ever, ever take away is doing a show with him because, mm. like, I love him like my brother. Yeah. But also, I would never want to go through that experience by myself. Oh, no, really? <laughs> it's, cra- it's, a, it's a crazy experience to... Because as soon as... I don't know about you, but, like, when I was younger, right, if you was on TV, your career was made. Mm. Right? Yeah. If you if you was on TV, you were famous. Yeah. Like people knew you, you had money, your life is going well. Like there there was like once you're on the screen on a regular basis, you're sorted. Yeah. You're sorted. And especially if you're on multiple channels on the same day. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Big, done. big. So with that in mind, I've always tried to play the game like the the way the rules have always been written. You have to do this, you have to do that, in order to kind of get to where you are. Did all those things and we finally get our own TV show, I'm gassed. I'm yeah. thinking my life is going to change, Rich. I'm thinking, yo, I'm going to buy my mum a house. I'm going to get myself a new car instead of driving around all these second-hand bangers. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, like, life is going to be good. I'm gonna, Yo, I'm going to do all the things I've dreamed of and I'm going to also work hard to com- maintain it. Yeah. None of those things are real. <laughs> no, nah, no, those nah. things are real. And, and I learned the hard way, hard way. And the good thing about it was, I got to learn it with someone else. Because if right. I didn't learn it with with Johnny, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't still be in the entertainment industry. Easy, really. Is Easy. That, that hard. Just, when when yeah. I talk about like stuff like mentally that's affected you, like mm. I've gone through a lot in my life in terms of like moved house loads when we was younger. Yeah, had to kind of live in different refuges and things. And t- but none of that is is tough compared to TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Compared to TV and the, the ups and downs you can get in TV. Oi. Mate. It's tough, bro. It seems to be that people in the industry, like, like people up front, like so the, the talent, if you will, seem mm-hmm. to be very disposable 
to the people behind. Very. While you're making them money, they're kind of like, oh, yeah, this is great. You're the best thing ever. But as soon mm-hmm. as that dips, they're like, nah, next. Yeah. And there's no uh, aftercare. There's no, like, oh, we've got to make sure because no they were there. Rich, they're, 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 I, rem- yeah. I remember vividly, like, we were doing, like, our second series on TV show. Things are going well. Like, everywhere I'm, I'm like, we're filming up in Media City, like, everyone knows who we are when we're walking places. Yeah. Like, I'm going into places. I've got dressing rooms with my name on the door and stuff. And it's like, yeah, there's thick foods and things waiting in there. they got ginger beer waiting in there because they know I love ginger right. beer. I was yeah. like, yo, like, <laughs> hey, I'm on the way up. This is this is CBBC we're talking about. We ain't even talking about, like, prime time. We're talking about kids TV. If this is the treatment I'm getting on kids TV, wait till they get to them prime time stuff. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm thinking. <laughs> Rah! As soon as we finish filming. That's it. Done. As you're walking out, you can see him chiseling your name off the door. <laughs> <laughs> Literally taking it off the door, oh, putting someone else's God. name on there. I re- Rich, I re- like it was like we like we got buried in the scheduling. Right. For, it, was, it was a strange one. They were like changing the scheduling up for some weird reason. And what they decided to do, we, we, we were making a kids uh, comedy sketch show. Yeah. First series went really well. We was on at a decent time, like five o'clock in the afternoon after kids come back from school very very rare it's a great time for it on a Tuesday it wasn't too bad every Tuesday come on sweet good numbers we're doing great they were saying yo we're getting in a new audiences you're talking to a a new demographic that we haven't been talking to before because they've been their TV shows were catering to a certain type of demographic and now we're we're making a show that speaks to them boom we're getting new people coming in it's amazing we're getting kids and uh, young teenagers a lot older watching CBBC coming up to us in the street I'm getting like 14, 15 year olds. Like, hey, you, hey, what, what? Hey. Are you Johnny and I know, yeah? And I was like, no, nah, I'm just, I know, innit? I'm just one of them, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking. <laughs> hey, sick, bro. I watch your show, you know? Your show is wicked, you know? Hey, keep doing what you doing, bro. Keep doing it. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. That, that's happening, right? But then, second series, what happens is they put our show on um, during the day. Right. Arts kids at school. So, 12 yeah. o'clock yeah yeah so no one's seeing it not the no people that you it. want yeah who's watching that <laughs> who's wa- every day every day as well burn through the whole series in two weeks fuck during the day yeah buried mate and, and then, then that was it that's it and how did that feel? I mean it must have been when you go from being like so popular and yeah this is it this is it and then you that day when you go yeah they go hey we're not doing it anymore you must be sort of like you just sort of sat on your bed going, what? Rich, now what? at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm in a nice flat. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paying pay big, but big rent. Yeah. Big rental prices in London. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's, that's done. Now what? Uh, what's next? I yeah. mean, I'll go back to the circuit, but the circuit's not going to pay for this place. And, yeah. And, and I thought we was going to, off the back of this, we're going to go on to this, we're going to write another series, we're going to try and do these other things. All those conversations just dry up. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, and then starts get you start getting into kind of disaster mode. And this is where, like, some of the most stressful times kind of come. Because, like, oh, right, I'm a hustler. I'm a natural-born hustler. I, I know how to make money. Mm. Like, I'll make money doing like, how I used to do. Like, I'll do some gigs. Uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be frugal with my spending. I'll get a little part-time job on the side. Got a little part-time job on the side. Yeah, right. I'm rich. I, uh, I was doing telly sales. No. Yeah. Really? So, Rich, get get this. I'm on TV. I'm on the way to TV. I'm getting the bus because it's cheaper. Yeah. To go to, to go to the telly sales job. I'm getting spotted by kids in the street on the way to school. Say, yo, I love your TV show. It's on the same day. Yeah. And I'm sitting next to a 17 year old cold calling companies and trying to do uh, cold market research. Oh my God. That and remember, have, yeah. I'm thinking, if you're on TV, you've made it. Because yeah. that that's what used to happen. Yeah. That's what used to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. were famous. Everyone knew you. Mate. you there, was only multi, there was only a few channels. This is the BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember the, when I realised that, that just because you're on the television doesn't mean that's it. Like Jeffrey from Rainbow. Yes. And I remember when the story came out that he was working in a supermarket now. Yeah. Before yeah. he died. And you're like, I know that. Oh, I know that. What? I know that. Yeah. Because you just like you just said, you think we're on the telly. That's it. You're just going to be on telly. 
do it. I whatever. was on telly, Rich. <laughs> but you think let's get you know it? how much they replay kids TV? Like, even though they buried us, like they replayed it same time every day. <laughs> <laughs> that must do you ready, and you know, how'd you cope with I that? Know, I was on t- I was on two different programs on the same day. <laughs> and I'm and I'm I'm cold calling, bro. I'm cold calling. <laughs> But you, what you just, this you, seventeen year old is making more money than me because he's getting, he's, he's getting, he's going past his requirements. He's 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 gone past five uh, completions. He's getting a little bonus. I'm not on the completions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there. Straight, I'm trying to do a good job. I don't want to be too good at my job. I don't even want to tell everybody what else I do around me. Nah. I don't even want to. I don't even be friends with them too tough because I like not like I feel like I'm too good for this place. But it's like yeah. I feel like my, my life is not in the right place. No. I'm, I've must have made a mistake somewhere. It's like going in need in to disguise. be on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting next to a 17-year-old with no qualifications at all. I've got two degrees. Wow. <laughs> and it's like, what, what, make it make sense. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And that's like those, like those times, way harder than anything I had to put up with like, as a kid, man. Well, that's way it. harder. Like you've pushed yourself to get two degrees. You know what I mean? It's like... It, it, like, well, it, it, it's not like you've been handed anything. Like you said, growing the way you grew right, up, where you, you know, you're up. Rich, the, re- the only reason was right. because, like, my mum my always put put it in my head as, like, I'm a black boy mm. uh, and I have to work twice as hard in this country. I have to. And most black parents will always say that to their kids. And it's, it, like, mentally, it's, it's disturbing, but it's also preparing you for the reality of what life is like in this country. You have to work twice as hard. Mm. You just have to. Yeah. Like, to just, if you want to get anywhere, you have to work twice as hard. Like, you can't just coast. There's no privilege to coast on. There's like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and so, like, my thing, I've always wanted to be in acting, always wanted to work in TV and film, but I had to be clever with it. I was like, mum, like, I don't want to disappoint my mum, and my mum was right. So, in order, and how I kind of went into acting was uh, I, got, I got my drama degree, and then I went into, uh, and then I got my teaching degree as well in order to kind of teach in, in secondary schools, which is kind of how like, I've, bonded with Johnny because he's also worked in schools. And so like that was that was my my way of safeguarding myself. It was like, right, mum, if anything goes wrong, I got the plan B in it. I could I, I can I can retrain and go back as a teacher and and stop everything else and stop all the entertainment stuff. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? And and I can help myself from there. But what I really want to chase is the acting dream and like and and becoming and creating some fantastic works of art becoming a comedian and doing all those f- fun things. That's the that's where my heart is at. Boy. And so I'm sitting in this cool centre. <laughs> I'm weighing these things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going, hang on a minute. I'm weighing these things up, Rich. Because yeah. I was like, what? what? Because if I make that decision to leave TV, that I can't, I'm not going back. Do you know what I mean? No. And, and as I said, it was like, if it wasn't for... Uh, me going through like a similar thing with Johnny at the time, then like I probably would have left. Probably would have left. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The fact that I could call him up and talk to him on a level as a guy, say, yeah, hey, look, this is what I'm going through at the minute. And be, him being able to kind of listen to me and uh, being we being able to kind of listen to each other and understanding where each other come from yeah. is mentally what kept me up here and made me kind of persevere through those tough moments. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. things have luckily overturned and then like things are going better than ever. But like at the time, jeez. Yeah. And you think that's it? Jeez. You think it's done, it's over? So oh, it's, uh, yeah. I was ready. I was ready. Oh, I was, <laughs> was not smiling, Rich. <laughs> you asked at the beginning. Yeah. It wasn't many times. That was one of the times. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh snap. And Johnny, <laughs> what, what I like about Johnny, having only, I've spent you know, a brief amount of times with him, doesn't mm. strike me as someone that would sort of not say anything. He so he's tries to be someone that would kind mm-hmm. of like yeah, yeah I'm not fucking having this you know he's like he's a good, very good listener as well yeah he's um, a great listener. like for yeah, someone yeah, who's yeah. is such a he's, he's so eloquent with his with his speech mm. um very good listener as well like yeah, as a yeah, friend yeah. to be able to kind of talk to and like, like as I said like I always consider him my brother mainly because not because of those dark moments but like he's there through the good times yeah. and he was also there in the bad times so do you know what I mean yeah, and yeah, so like yeah. for someone who's gone through those moments with you it's like yeah you're my brother for life isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and how did that come about were you working together already or did you, did they put you together no we we were work, we were like working together like I like I, I run like a like a comedy show called Kinetic Comedy mm. and then like the first time I properly met him I think he invited me down to he used to run like a comedy night 
East London, I think in Dalston somewhere. Okay. I think I did a couple of gigs for him. And then like as a as a return the favour sort of thing, I got him on a couple of bills of mine, like and it's like, yeah, and we kinda got to know each other that way. I kinda it's like, yeah, we we're, we're like we yeah, we like each other, you know, like we're, yeah. we're good friends. And then we did we went up to Edinburgh and we did like a two hander together. And um we had a blind in Edinburgh, man. Right. Probably the oh, it was the best Edinburgh you could possibly get. It was it was how nice. we I guess we kind of got the TV show in a in a strange way. Yeah. Um there was like there was a there was a whole bunch of different producers and things that we knew from the circuit uh and uh, and whatnot. And we all, obviously everyone's up there in Edinburgh, invited them down to the show. And they were already in talks with us about some smaller things. And then when they saw us in Edinburgh together, seeing us in a live setting, yeah. like we were doing like a free show. We was on like, the, I think it was the free fringe at the time. Ugh, when was this? I think it was like 2011, something, one of them times. And uh, yeah, we started off in a small room. And as I said, like when, when we first got there, the, you know what free fringe is like. It's yeah, like you're sharing yeah. a venue with like lots of different people. Yeah. Venue's not really fit to the spoke <laughs> to what's supposed to be going on. So the first thing we did is, we're changing all this shit around. Right. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't want the stage over there. Nah, nah, nah. We're putting the stage in the center. Yeah. What? I want, I want it wide. Yeah. I want to be right in front of the bar. If anyone's at the bar, they're watching the show. I was like, we, we need music. Yeah. Remember what I said about the ambience? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, we need yeah. the music. As soon as I, I don't care what time that other person's on before us, when it gets to 15 minutes before our show, we're turning on the playlist. Yeah? So he better finish up. I don't care what he's doing. He better finish up because the music's coming on. We put the, put the jams on, music blaring out in the street. 15 minutes before the, the show, me and Johnny go out flying, give a couple of flies out. Boom. We was, and then slowly each day, there was more and more audience. And then the same people were coming back as well. And it's like, oh, bro, wow. you've seen the show before. And it's like, yeah, I know, but I want to bring my friend. I was like, right. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then as it went on, like to the point, our last show, we was we had to turn people away. Did they, they were physically, they couldn't get in the door. Yeah, right. And like, we, like yeah, we had like a, a amazing Edinburgh. Amazing. We was doing like, because basically, we accident, we, we didn't, we didn't practice. Not like, we didn't practice. We, we, we had material. We didn't yeah. do a show together. We didn't do any previews together. We did one. One preview one. together. One preview together. In uh, it was uh, I think it was the Bedford, yeah. I think so, uh, in South London, and um, it was it was just, just about to we had booked one. It was like three days before the fringe, yeah. And it was like and we booked one to, to do our stuff, and then we was like, who's gonna go on first? Like we, we don't know. Like <laughs> it was it was to go on first. Like do like like twenty five minutes and or half hour, and then you do the other half hour. It's like who's gonna go on first? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. And then what happened was there was like uh, there was only there was like. Uh, there was a stool on stage and there was two microphones. Yeah. And so it was like, how about we both just go out there then? We just, nice. we just stay on the stage. And it's like, so so one of us went and sat down on the stool with the other microphone and the other one was just doing our bit. And then what we, we would do, we like, obviously we'd chat to the audience at first, like warm up a bit, but we'd just do it together. We'd just bounce off each other. We'd just yeah, like, oh, nice. just naturally just bounce off each other. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. And then what would happen? We'd heckle each other during our, each other's jokes. Or or one up each other in those jokes. So like I might do in be be in the middle of my bit. Johnny might say something, get an extra laugh. <laughs> I can jump off the back of that, get an extra laugh, and it's nice, and it's it's nice and natural. And if anything happened in the stage, uh, uh, anything happened in the show, you always had someone to back you up in yeah. case like there's like a heckler or whatever. There was always someone to back you because like you could back them. But there's always there's another comedian. The two comedians were against one heckler. Nice. It's game over every time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and so we had, so we had so we started doing that, and we were just both on the stage. And, pe- and once we finished that preview, everyone was like, it's like, yo, l- like love the stuff of you both on the stage." It's like, yeah, it? it's, like, it's like, yeah, you should do more of that. It's like, yeah, yeah, All right, yeah, let's do the show like that. Let's do the show. We literally went up to Edinburgh, did the show with both of us on the stage at all times. We were just nice. both on the stage. Uh, and yeah. then like we'd we'd obviously we'd like he'd do his 25 i'd do my 25 sort of thing but yeah we'd interject naturally and at different times every day we'd just play with oh, each other like mate. like like i came in at that bit on the yesterday today oh yeah i ain't gonna say nothing there i'm gonna jump in here instead <laughs> you know what i mean or react to something that's happened in the audience yeah and then like we can we can like if i'm getting a laugh off off your joke we're, we're both winning because it makes us both look good because yes. the audience are laughing and they're vibing with it and they're having a good time and then that's how we constructed the show. And uh, a bunch of producers saw us uh, as like a, almost like a double act. 
yeah. doing our thing on stage and that's kind of where we like Johnny and I know was kind of uh, born I guess amazing man and what it yeah. sounds like as well is like you were both what normally happens with double acts I've done it a couple of times myself and it just mm. seems that naturally all by itself one of you becomes the straight man and one of you becomes like the clown and yeah. that's normally what I've been in the situations when I've done that it mm. just happens that way as well but it sounds like you were both kind of you're both the no, same. Do no, you know what it is? We both got big personalities, right, so we. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> so like, yeah. I could, I could never play the straight man, and and Johnny's got a big, uh, a big personality as well, so he couldn't be a straight man either. Nah. So it's like we're just gonna just have to be both domineering forces, and like for some reason, like we complement each other. Like, yeah. uh, we just we just get on really well. Like as I said, like brothers. Like I can't honestly, Rich. I don't think I've ever argued with him ever. Really? Or anything meaningful. Yeah. No, yeah. No, we got a little, like, little tiff here and there. Just nothing. My, like, it's mine, isn't it? Like, yeah, like yeah, half yeah. a day is gone and then you're, you're back to normal again. <laughs> but like, I don't think I've ever argued with him about anything. Really? No. Why have y'all got a mate like that? We've never, we've never had, I've known him, I've known, wow, I've known him since we were three. So mm. like nearly like 47 years. And me oh, and wow. him have never argued. There's been moments where he's been like, oh, for fuck's sake. But, We've never, we've never had an argument. We just yeah. He's never taken it out on you, though. No, not ever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy, isn't it? Just sometimes people just are. And so, I, yeah, sometimes you just have yeah. friends like that. You just, yeah. yeah, you're just always on a on a nice wavelength, and it never goes anywhere else. I, I well, no, it doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't go anywhere negative. Yeah, right. and there's been yeah. times when he's just been like. Oh, why you just sat, you should have just told me Rich you know, when, or could have sorted it out but, or whatever and he, mm. it, but there's never been we've never had massive Barneys we've always just yeah. got on on that's good ah, man I, I, I like yeah. that man yeah because uh, I mean not every time you have to be arguing you know sometimes you can have a nice <laughs> life innit <laughs> <laughs> there are other people that so they, so they thrive on conflicts and I'm like how do you sleep like know, what man. is wrong with you why do you want to just can't, fight with everyone my my personality doesn't click with people like that, you know. No, I'm too. Like, you know what I'm like. I'm happy, go, go lucky, kind of chilled out. I'm I'm hyper, but like when I'm just like one to one with people, I'm just chilled out like this. I'm just like, yeah, we have a laugh, we chill out, have yeah, a, like, nice conversation. Like, it never goes anywhere kind of negative, and because I'll never provoke anyone in that kind of way unless no. I'm on stage. So like, I would. I always see is like I'll do you that respect. You just don't do me that respect. You get mm. the same respect back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was quite angry growing up. Is it? Yeah. I think Wait, I was, would we not have gotten on? We no, we would have gotten on. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. That's the thing. We would hate each other, innit? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I okay, see that rich in school, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walking around like I was just fucking, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, was you the guy in school? No, no. Wait, do you know what? Someone said to me, because it was an all boys school, and because oh, uh -oh. it was in the 80s, so uh -oh. you, had to, you had to have a certain something about you. Oh. And I remember after I left school, I've said this on here before, maybe, my mate Ian Duffy, bless him, no longer with us, unfortunately. But he he said to me once after we'd left school. So this is in the nineties, and he just goes, mm. he goes, Rich, he goes, you were seen as like the third hardest in our school at one point, and I'm like, oh, the third, oh damn, yeah. yeah. But, I never, second, I, but I never even, oh, there was these <laughs> twins, the Sim twins, oh, who oh, went on to be part of the Chelsea Headhunters, oh, okay. and I'm like, nah, I never. All I did was walk around like scowling and being a bit moody. I never had a fight. I just, it was all blagging because I didn't want to hey. get my head punched in. That's but, what makes you a good comedian, man. Yeah, yeah. Just got that front, just got that front now. You got, you got to be able to blag it sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? There's, there's many times I've been up there and it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to have to. It's 30 minutes, guys. Let's come on. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. find a way. Let's find a way. There's been a couple of times <laughs> when I've, I've said something and then I, I, in my head I've gone, what are you saying? What are you doing? Yeah. That guy's okay, massive. Okay. He's gonna he's gonna fucking stomp you flat. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, mate. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I've never I've never got any of uh, an altercation like that could have started in a fight. But mm. I have offended someone to the point where everyone hated me. Really? Um, yeah. What was it? Uh, I think it was like it was High Wickham. That was it. Hellfire. Oh. <laughs> And it, it was it was a tough it was a tough one to begin with. Mm. Like the, I won't say the MC's name because they're, they're a fantastic comedian, but they yeah. were having a tough one as well. And like I was like, bro, if if this guy if this comedian is is struggling to MC this thing, and I'm on first, Oi. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, like this guy's a headliner. Like I look up to this guy, and yeah. he's struggling to MC this one. Oh, I go out there do my first joke, nothing. Second joke, nothing. And I was like, all right, all right the joke, the material, they're not, obviously not liking the material. Let's go into some banter. Let's do some improv and see what we can source out in the crowd. 
picked, picked on some one lady in the front row who weren't laughing and started taking a piss out of her. Turned out she couldn't hear because she had a hearing aid. And oh, uh, that uh, was it. Yeah, so yeah, that was it. Was <laughs> I looked at my watch, which I still had twenty five minutes. Oh! <laughs> oh. Rich, yeah. when I say I asked the uh, when I come off stage, I asked the I asked the behind the scenes staff, where's the, where's the fire exit? So <laughs> this 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 particular club, if like you had to go out through the through the audience, Oof. and it's a it was it's a big it's a big theatre, yeah. big theatre. I think it was about three hundred people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like you can't go out there; it's alarmed. I had to I had to walk out, oh, mate. past the bar. Through the through the atrium, the reception bit, and every time, and as I'm walking, everyone's just like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh god, oh bad." See, it's oh, not like yeah. a band or a singer where someone goes, oh, "I was a shit night." Mm. I wasn't. Oh, they did, didn't play the songs that I like. If with comedy, for some reason, they hate you. Like you've yeah, ruined you, their night if you're yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got. I, I, I messed up someone's Friday. Oh, a lot of people's Friday evenings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people's Friday evenings that day. Why? But then we go back for more. There's something wrong with us. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know what it is? As much as I'm um, like, we're all afraid of dying on stage. Mm. After, give it a week or so, it's, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not that bad. You go yeah. again. It's it's fine. And like the, re the ratio, as you get on, the ratio of deaths like start to go down. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. Those sometimes guys. you get into them rats. Sometimes you get into them rats. I'm like, whoa, five in a row. Okay. Yeah, what's okay. going on? <laughs> oh, no. Must be me, then. Oh, Must no. be me. <laughs> yeah, it can't be every audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's only so many times you can play the audience. Yeah, the way the, the chairs were set up. Yeah, no one's going to laugh with the way if the chairs is facing this way. With the <laughs> yeah. You know, what were they facing? What, were you standing behind them? Like, every time. <laughs> Wait, I once got heckled. What was it? This was eight. Oh, I got heckled by next door. What? Next door's club. <laughs> this, this was, this was, it was one of the, this was Jungler's Portsmouth back in the day. Whoa. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. And I think oh, it was my. like next door was like Tiger Tiger or something. Yeah. Yes. I was basically doing, doing my jokes. It's going well. I was like, okay, it's going well. It's going well. All of a sudden I get... Don't forget, everybody, two for one drinks, two for one drinks. Okay, all night long, all night long. Make sure you take advantage. And it's like, their DJ was coming through the same PA system. They were on the same wireless channel. As my, so they're coming out the speakers louder than me. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and the audience are like, is this part of the show? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, is this part of the show? Now? What's, what's going on? Uh, like, that's not bad, you know? Why are you not here? <laughs> yeah, why are you not Let's just, let's shake You know off. what I mean? Tiger, tight. Let's all go next door, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a few like that. I remember the one in, there was one in Holborn and that was Jonglers as well. And downstairs, Next door, you had like the Dream Boys or whatever, or like Chippendale type <laughs> affair. And so, whoever was going to be on at that point, you knew halfway through your set, you're going, So, anyway, I was talking to my mum, and then next door, you just get, Rah! and everyone goes, Rah! Yeah, and all these women screaming, these yeah. greased up, topless <laughs> fucking idiots come out. And you're like, oh, I can't compete with the Dream Boys. Fuck's hey, sake, man. Th the conditions we have to put up with, you know. Yeah. Rich. The conditions. <laughs> Where's oh. HR? Where's HR, man? The conditions we got to put up with some of these gigs is mad. But the amount of times they think, like, oh, yeah, we know. I go, you go, you get there, when you, especially when you're starting out and you, these, those smaller gigs, you get there, you go, where, well, okay, where's the comedy? They go, oh, it's there. And you go, and the microphone's next to the bar in the pub. And you're like, it's there? And you go, yeah. I've done a couple of them ones Man. in the corner of the pub. Yeah, and they go... I don't know what I was thinking, Rich. I was like, yo, I look like I'm going to get bottled in this place. Yeah. What's happening? Because everyone in the I pub, here? they don't know that comedy's about to happen. Nope. There's no sign that there's comedy. <laughs> there's just one lonesome microphone. That's it. Just there. And you're like, oh... Yeah. Yeah. And you No can... MC. You got to do it yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just stood there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we don't do MCs here. Because we got to pay an extra person, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so you got to do it. <laughs> Fuck, it's, it's definitely character building. Why was building. I saying yeah to these gigs? Why was I saying yeah? Because like, he was yeah, twenty yeah, quid. Yeah, sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that twenty quid. Yo, I, I remember going Manchester when I first started. I went Manchester for for uh, for five minutes. Man. Five minutes. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, culture all the way up. 
coach all the way back. No, I didn't even get no, I didn't even get the coach back. I got the coach back the next day. I had to stay in a little B and B because it was too late by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach back the next day for five minutes. Oh, mate. And that's why it annoys yeah, me now when people, yeah. people go, Oh, you only work for twenty minutes and I go, No, 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 no. All the coach journeys, all the times oh, I've been Tally that up, man. Four o'clock <laughs> in the morning at Nottingham bus station, waiting for mm-hmm. my bus mm-hmm. back to London. That's them, that, them, yeah, them times where you drive back from Liverpool the same night because you didn't want to pay for a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I killed a duck doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Who said he killed a duck? I didn't mean racing. to. I didn't mean He's to. like, I need to get back. I was, coming down, I was coming down the A1 and I'd been Yo, like... You said it out the way, Daffy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm too tired. This is happening. This is happening. <laughs> I was going down the A- the A1 and I'm just like the sun was coming up, I'm tired. And I'm driving out <sighs> and this duck just came out of the century reservation, just like bah, <sighs> like there. And I'm like, oh, I couldn't uh, stop. There's no time. I just there, couldn't, like, stop. couldn't stop. It was too like didn't bother with the brakes. Bang. Yeah, yeah, too tired. He's like, there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. This is happening. Yeah. And then I saw in the mirror. I didn't even stop because so I'm like in the mirror. I could just see all the feathers oh. flying up. I'm like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> so R.I.P. Stop. Duck. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> we should have come said, out I don't want to slow down the velocity otherwise it's going to add another five minutes on to the journey uh, <laughs> I need to keep this average speed oh up oh god <laughs> I, hope, I hope the duck was on its own didn't have its like, little kids with it oh, oh, wow. we will no. never know now orphan yeah. alone let's ducks. just say there's some orphan ducks in it <laughs> <laughs> so any vegans vegetarians listen I'm so sorry I didn't mean to it just happened yeah I mean, it, it, you you wouldn't seem as bad if you put the brakes on, but the fact that you sped up, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that was. If I speed up, it'll make it better. <laughs> yeah, ooh, it's a duck. <laughs> it'll make it quicker. It'll make it quicker. Yeah, yeah, the, faster, yeah. the faster I go, I'm teaching the I'm teaching the ducks a lesson. <laughs> we did it in Central Reservation in the first place. I was in the fast lane. Wow, well, this. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. it's not the fast lane, is it? It's the overtaking. Oh, what, like they say, they go like you got the three lanes. Yes. You got the you got the you got the lane you're supposed to be in, and then you got the overtaking lanes. And then someone said okay. the third lane, the third lane is for crime. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was definitely crime taking place that yeah, night. Yeah, murder, murder. Actual you just murder. expose yourself on the podcast. You might have to edit this out. <laughs> you're gonna get shut down, get cancelled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Paul, Paul, you might have to edit this one. <laughs> <laughs> It's a quick talk, this one. 30 minutes. Yeah, oh, wow. Well, yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah, thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, they spoke about Ghostbusters. That was about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't get that. You couldn't get that doll, could you? Could you? And then it finished. Weird. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just went straight to the end. <laughs> <laughs> let's, change, let's change the subject. <laughs> that's right. Kill <laughs> but it's good. But like, going back to what we were talking about earlier about how it's, you know, things are changing now and for the better, mm. that must be. Yes. I know that, you know, it's. It's still going to take a while for things to change completely and be, and be, for want of a better yes. phrase, the norm. Yes. But at least it's happening. And that's the thing. That's where we're at now. This change now. So people now may, may not benefit from what's going on, but no. the next generation, it'll be, it won't be. It will be a lot easier for the next generation, yeah. but it would be nicer if it was easier for this generation. Yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the issue, I think. Because yeah. I, think, I think all of us can see like the change is, is happening, yeah. which is nice. It's just, but as you're saying, the change is, is super slow yeah. and there's no change at the top. That's where the issue is. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you need the changes to come from the top for yeah. things to be, to make some drastic turns. Yeah. And at a minute, like it's like, I'm not saying like we're lower rung, but like in talent, that's like the easiest thing to kind of chop and change around. But yeah. when you're talking about behind the scenes, executives and producers and, yeah. and uh, commissioners and things like that, if they're, if... Like if they're the same kind of people, then they're gonna still commission the same kind of stuff, and like yeah. that that stuff is always gonna go to the forefront, and that's the most popular stuff, and so that's gonna keep you know kingmakers keep making more that next kingmakers, yes, basically. But that's uh, the, that's the thing. That's the thing is like you say, it's all those people that are going, oh yeah, we where well, we're doing more things to be more diverse mm-hmm. and blah blah, blah. and you go, yeah, no, nah, you're doing it to keep your job. Yeah, exactly that. Like, don't get me don't get twisted, like Rich. Like in my, I've had like a, a really cool career, man, mm. and like, and uh, I've managed to like present and be in different TV shows and all sorts of things that I never would have dreamed of. Yeah. But there's been many times I've been the only black person there. Yeah. Many times, many times, and there's been r- hairy moments where something's come up, and it's like no one like. The only person that can speak out is me, yeah. but I wish someone else could speak out. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Like yeah, so, yeah, yeah. something might happen in uh, in in like behind the scenes or a situation might crop up, and it's like, oh, am I the only one that can see that something's wrong here? Mm. Why is it for me to put my career on the line and uh, shut this person down or call this person out or yeah. say this is wrong? Why can't you all see it? Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. Think that's where the issue issue is because you can't it's one thing having like yeah it's nice to have like some diversity in the space and bringing in some uh new talent like black or brown or whatever but you can't just put them into the same spaces no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't just put them in the same spaces because then it's like oh i don't want to be in this space yeah, exactly. <laughs> this space is rotten do you know what i mean there's <laughs> many a time i've done a show and i was like don't i don't want to do this again i don't want no. to do this again but and then they're like yo they loved you they want to get you back Tell him no. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm good. Back. No, I'm good. Because the setup and setup's not right. Yeah, like as I said, like we all have to feel comfortable at work, right? Yes. And you and you can't you can't have someone say, "Oh, here, here's an opportunity," but they have them extremely uncomfortable in that opportunity because then they can't shine. Like you yeah. want everyone to do the best they they can possibly be. So therefore, you need to make like make sure all the factors around that are just as good. Yeah, we need to like if you want like uh, me to be playing some acting as like a particular character, we need to, need this character to be written properly. I I can't have like a, a Jamaican, a British born Jamaican character be written by some guy who went to prep school or who who, who could just come out of eating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that's but that's the case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or that character just doesn't exist at all. <laughs> and so it's therefore that opportunity is not there. Yeah. And so, it's, and so it's, it's that, like we need, we need like diversity in all sorts of areas within the industry in order for things to kind of change. At the minute, it's like talent wise where it's changing. There's a few like behind the scenes things, a few more camera people and yeah. a few more writers coming in, which is great. But as I said, like at the top, if the top is the same, <laughs> then well, yeah. the same old things gonna happen. Absolutely. And it's a, because a lot of this industry is built on nepotism. Mm -hmm. and so yeah so there's so there's, many oh, there's been rich there's so many times i've been sitting in uh i remember, i always remember the time where uh, me and johnny got just got commissioned for a show yeah and we there was it was only the four of us like our producer and uh, uh my current agent at uh, at the time who was also a producer uh there was four of us in the team mm. that managed to secure a commission and get a, a show running for like a season of like 12 episodes. Yeah. Fantastic stuff for four people. That Like the same company had like a comedy department with like 20 people. And our names never came up at any point when it came to like developing new comedies. So yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. we should be there, but like we're sitting at a, ta a table away from you. <laughs> yeah. But like their thing was, they would go to a comedy and it's like, I really love that comedian that we saw last night. We really need to get them in and test out a little pilot thing. It's like, oh yeah, they'd be absolutely fantastic at that. And it, it, it's Johnny and I know right over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, not anyway. you. Not you. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, I absolutely love that comedian. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. And oh, and no. because and and what what we was finding is a lot of uh, people that worked in TV they were going to see the same shows put on at the same places they were going to the Edinburghs yeah uh, they were yeah, going to yeah. the same places they were going to the Soho Theatre or they were going to all these uh, the the same places to see talent and they weren't going to the other places where there was fantastic talent out there it was like they weren't going to any black comedy clubs weren't going to any Asian ones there was like there's tons of talent out there lots of people put on unique fasc fascinating shows you would never see them there. No. You would never see them there. They'd get invited. They'd never go. Never go. They'd always make an excuse. Oh, I can't make it. Can't make it. Yeah. But when it when it's that one comedian that you do really like, oh, I gotta make sure I'm there. When everyone's yeah, that's <laughs> one person. Gotta there make is... sure I'm there for that one. <laughs> there is a snobbery though. There is a there is I've a seen it three thing, times man. already, Rich. I've seen it three <laughs> times. I, I, I know the jokes back of my hand. <laughs> Absolutely amazing comedian. Absolutely. Uh, but there is a snobbery. <laughs> there is a snobbery. There is a class thing. Where it's definitely they, a class. You know, oh, they'll, they'll let you know. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's like oh no, we you know, and and they they try and say to you, like, because in the end you go like, well, this is just tokenism. You've got like one working class person, you have got one mm -hmm. black person, one Chinese mm -hmm. person, and then they go, yeah, but we're we're so diverse. You go, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. you're, this is just tokenism. This is. What I've been I've been that token person way too many times. Yeah. I know, I know when I get. Sometimes I'll I'll know on a project I'm the only black person, and, and I'll and I'll make it uncomfortable on purpose for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, why am I the only one here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I say something? I just uh, <laughs> want to point out 
something. Yeah. And yeah, I'm constantly. hoping. I hope I'm hoping it's changing. But I hope it changes quicker. Like you say, it's it's slow, isn't it? But it's 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 slow and it's fr- the reason it's frustrating is because there's incredibly talented people being overlooked. Yes. That's my biggest bugbear. Yeah. Like the there's incredible people that have like worked way harder than I have that don't have the careers that I have. Yeah. And like I will always look up to them, but the industry won't. The industry won't see them as legends. The industry won't see them as uh, path path makers. They were just people that just didn't make it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what what frustrates me the most. Because what what does make it mean? Well, like as long as like you're entertaining audiences, you should be happy, right? No, you need to be supported monetarily as well because yeah, exactly. we got to live out here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's what it's it's nice going home and you say, Yeah, I, I smashed the audience and there was a thousand people, everyone loved me, it was fantastic. But if you gotta go to the second job the next day. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're on the bus going to the call centre, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What does the thousand? What does smashing a, a crowd full of thousand people mean? It doesn't mean anything. No, It'll <laughs> tax man don't care about that, Rich. <laughs> HMRC said we don't care how many people was in, in attendance. Imagine they that. said, <laughs> your landlord, your "This landlord. is how much money you owe." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, I can't afford my rent. But last night, thousand people. There was a thousand. Man, you can't people. have them conversations with HMRC. Oh. They don't care. They're harsh on the phone. Harsh. Yeah, They're harsh on the phone. They are, man. Listen. I, <laughs> I know, this has been amazing, man. No worries, man. It's always a pleasure, man. Always we, a pleasure. It shouldn't be like three years since we, we, we speak. We need to speak ridiculous. more often, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You're <laughs> such a top dude. Uh, where, time, can, where can we find you online, man? Uh, you can probably you can find me on the, the, all the socials. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm Inel, I-N-E-L. Or you can find me on Twitch. I, like, I broadcast on there a few times a week. Uh, Inelius, I-N-E-L-I-O-U-S. And then, other than that, yeah, just type my name into Google, innit? There's only one I know. There's, there's, there's only one, innit? There's not that many. Hey, like Madonna. It's easy, if you can't find me, you don't want to find me, innit? <laughs> yeah, you're not looking. You're not looking. <laughs> oh, sorry, Google. <laughs> top you line, top line. <laughs> Google knows. <laughs> How about you ask Google, innit? <laughs> oh, man. Oh. But I couldn't find you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's only one I know, knobhead. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, you've not got any buttons on that computer. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> right now, thanks, man. Real no pleasure. I uh, hope we speak to you soon. No, love to you, bro. Love to you, man. Thank you very much. <laughs>